Welcome back. I'm Aparna Mukherjee at CKLU. You're listening to Communal Living 96.7 FM. And I have with me Ms. Laura Blees from Seeds for Eco Communities. And we are talking about sustainable living, conscious living and sustainable housing. So, Laura, I am curious about your thoughts on indigenous wisdom and indigenous culture. How important is is it to bring indigenous wisdom and western science together to address the environmental challenges we face in canada and around the globe thanks aparna i am very humbled to have had the opportunity for many years now to sit side by side with a number of first nations elders and indigenous communities who are really leading the charge on why we need to protect this earth The understanding that I have been privileged to share in on this journey through ceremony, teachings, and getting out into the bush and on the water has made it very clear to me how valuable Indigenous knowledge really is. In the Ontario context, which is what I am most familiar with, Indigenous elders have such a powerful grasp on the surrounding environment both in understanding how it is changing and what is needed to protect it. They can recognize change in plants and animal life that are key indicator to changes that are taking place more broadly, and this can inform actions that are needed. There is space in this world for both Indigenous and Western science to coexist. They can complement one another as we all face a common challenge of planet saving together. So you ask how important Indigenous knowledge is? In my eyes, it is essential to our survival. Interesting. Um, not a lot of people understand Indigenous culture and uh, would be... Um, I guess, important to talk about how ancient wisdom from different cultures, how it can be um, included in understanding the environment and saving the planet. Um, now, we know the difference between renewable and non-renewable energy sources, but what can a common man, a local Uh, person uh, do to use energy efficiently? What are the tools available for people to address the energy crisis on the planet currently? Well, there are so many opportunities to ease off on your energy inputs. Thank you so much for this question. One of the simple first steps to begin your journey to reduce your carbon footprint and understand your energy use is to calculate your carbon footprint and related energy use. So there's a number of calculators that are available online free of charge that can help you assess this. Think about all the areas in your life that involve energy use. For example, in the home, when you travel, work, take part in social activities, ask yourself how much energy is being used for each of these items. In the home, you can improve insulation, seal up drafty areas, and transition to energy efficient appliances. Try and get into the habit of turning off the lights and unplugging electronics when they are not in use. Many are not aware that when something is plugged in but turned off, it often still draws a trickle charge. This can accumulate over time. Let's also not forget energy efficiency opportunities with water use. This is especially important if you're on a municipally sourced water system. The energy used to clean and bring each drop of water to your house and then take it back to a treatment plant adds up over time. You can strive to take shorter showers and repurpose used water from cooking to water your plants. If you're really excited about opportunities in this area, consider investing in a rainwater barrel and or a great water system to reuse as much as possible. How and where we travel also consumes energy. Consider walking, biking, or taking public transit instead of driving everywhere. And when you're thinking about your travel, explore trips in your own province or country instead of always traveling abroad. Small steps can help. 
If you have the opportunity to take the stairs and avoid using the elevator, not only will you save energy, your body will thank you for that little boost of exercise. In our modern busy world, we often resort to disposable utensils, plates, decorations, and more for social gatherings. Instead, look towards reusable options that can be used time and time again. Begin carrying around a feast bundle wherever you go with the basics you need to enjoy a warm drink or a hot meal without creating any additional waste. One of our volunteers at Seeds for Eco Communities also taught me about bringing a reusable container when you go out to eat. Often there are leftovers, and this way you can skip the throwaway packaging. In your free time, consider taking part in activities that help with our energy and carbon crisis, such as volunteering your time with organizations or initiatives that are doing kind things for our planet. I encourage our listeners to check out Seeds for Eco Communities website as we have a variety of resources and tip sheets to help you on your way. Now, I'm 28. I'm ready to buy a home and settle down. <laughs> How can investing in low impact homes such as tiny homes and utilizing self-sustainable methods such as rainwater harvesting be financially beneficial to younger families? Um you know, in, in a world where housing prices are skyrocketing, what can we do? You're right. The cost of living for those young people who are trying to get established in their own home has become out of reach for many of our youth. This is particularly predominant in larger cities where the typical cost of a home can reach or exceed a million dollars. I remember when a million dollars meant you were rich. I guess I'm dating myself now. Those days are long gone, but there is hope for the future. Low impact homes such as tiny homes, straw bale homes, earth block homes, or hempcrete homes, to name a few, are gaining traction in today's market and are being accommodated as laws are modernized. For example, in Ontario this January, the provincial government established rules on buying and building tiny homes into the Ontario Building Code. Smaller footprint homes, simply put, are far less expensive than traditional homes, and there are so many options out there to pick from. Depending on what you're comparing, a smaller scale, low impact home, such as a tiny home, could be as little as a quarter or even a tenth of the cost of a traditional modern house build. Once you have a sustainable home, you can further enhance cost savings through the use of rainwater harvesting systems, which will keep your water bills low or maybe even eliminate them by limiting the amount that needs to be drawn from a municipal supply. Although some think of tiny homes as a step back to the olden days, it is actually the opposite. They are modern, efficient, creative, and include any of the amenities that a typical home would provide. You just need to choose wisely on what you will integrate into your new, smaller footprint space. You can even buy a tiny home from places like Ikea now, starting as low as $50,000. However, when you embark on this type of home, you need to factor in costs and time that is required to obtain the necessary local approvals and what is needed for the integration of water and energy sources for your home. All in all, even with these additions, smaller size low impact homes provide an option for our youth who are looking to get established in the market. One last point. Another added financial bonus of this type of living is that maintenance is less and if planned right can be mostly taken care of by the homeowner. And think of all the time you'll save cleaning a smaller space. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, Laura, on tiny homes. I will definitely keep that in mind, and it's definitely something to consider. Now, for my listeners, I am going to play, be playing one of my favorite soundtracks, Christopher's Dream uh, by David Lanz. Um, I paint to it all the time. Um, and when we come back from a musical break, we will continue our conversation with Miss Laura. Um, you are listening to Communal Living at 96.7 FM.